all right welcome to part three we've got the basics of this all uh, up and running so we've got our first version controller but the code's pretty messy and i said in the last video i'd probably take a look at making this a bit neater and tidier um one thing i would like to do before we do that is um we've hard coded a value in here of 10 for the mouse um sensitivity and i really think we should take that value out and, and make it a bit more useful so um, what I'm going to do is we'll just go up to the top here and we'll create a new variable. Um, and what I'm going to do with this variable is I'm actually going to give it a range. So if you type in um, range and then the brackets inside of the square brackets that you can see there, um, this allows us to set some value. So I'm going to go from 5 to maybe, um, I don't know, 15. Um, and then if you set the actual uh, variable as well so I'm going to say float I'm going to say mouse sensitivity and I'm going to make that uh, default value of 10 which is what I have um, already in there now the the range uh, a little piece of uh, text at the top above this um, actually sets a slider up inside of unity so um, it does make it so that you can uh, set the values maximum and minimum. They're never going to go outside of those values. So um, all we have to do is make sure that we use it in the right place. So where we've got mouse sensitivity, um, we've had those hard coded values, which is put in mouse sensitivity. This um, pitch value as well would be a really good thing to do. So um, um, if we do the pitch value, we've got a minus 45 to 45. Um, we could and a couple of ways of setting this up to make it a little bit more useful so if you assume that this will be a negative value and this will be the positive value what you could easily do is um, just like we did with the mouse sensitivity you could do another range and this time we'll go from say 45 would be the minimum and the maximum would be up to maybe 85 so just about 90 and then we're just going to create the value we're going to say float um, pitch uh, pitch range maybe call it pitch range and then um, make it equal to the default that we had there so um, this will mean that you can change this value um, between 45 and 85 and I'll set it at the default for now and if we go down here again we're just going to say minus minus pitch range and we're going to say uh, pitch range so with a maximum as well so that'll go between minus and positive on that whatever that value is for setting the pitch and um, so that way we can change that as well now um all of these will work uh however when you start building in more features into this this could get really messy and having an update function that looks like this is never good and there's several ways that we can tidy this up. Um, it might be nice if we were able to take out the um, take out of the inputs um, and make that a separate function, and then we can have the rest of it as the actual updating the player. Um, so the way that we could do this would be to take these values and put them in as um, global variables. Um, that way we can. Uh, we'll not have to create them inside of the update and then the garbage disposer or will get rid of them every single frame and then it'll create them again and then it'll get rid of them. This way it'll just take up one bit of memory and it won't have to stress about being freed up again at every time that the update um, finishes. So I think it's probably the best thing to do that and it makes the code look a lot neater as you'll see in a few seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these values um, Write myself a comment and I'm going to say um, uh, there'll be member variables so member um, input values and we're just going to go and uh, copy them in basically so I'm going to say it's a floating point and it's x input and we'll make uh, initialize that to zero and then we've got a floating point which was z input and we'll make that uh, zero as well. Um, what that allows me to do now is not declare it here. Um, so we're not creating a new floating point variable inside this update function which runs every frame. We're just using the ones that are up here. I forgot to spell that one out. Z input. And um, 
also we take some we take the x mouse uh, as well and we don't actually store the y mouse um but we probably should so we'll just quickly put the x mouse in so it would be float uh, x mouse equals zero zero and uh float y mouse equals zero and then down here we can simply get rid of that and when we do this one what we'll do is we'll say um y mouse equals and we'll copy and paste this whole thing up to there and then we can say y mouse for that pitch changes um yep, i forgot the semicolon at the end that's why it doesn't work it so uh what that allows us to do is we're going to we're actually going to take these four lines where we gather the input we're going to take those four lines out and i'm going to put them inside of a new method so this new method is going to just be called uh, be a void return type so it's not going to return anything and it's going to be called um, get input input and it won't take any parameters and all it will do is basically these four lines so it will get the x and z inputs and it will also get the x mouse input and it will get the y mouse input and paste them in there so what that means is that the input has kind of been decoupled a little bit from the the rest of the update function so we, we're just tidying it a little bit um all we need to do now is just call uh, make sure that we call get input at the start here and all those input values that are up there will get stored um the other thing i might do um just to keep this even neater is um all the rest of this code um i might put in another function as well and we're just going to call it update mm, make it a, sorry make it a void return type and call it update movement and it doesn't need any parameters on this occasion um and we just copy and paste it all that we have here control x control v and we'll paste it in to update movement so the update function although we're effectively doing the same thing um what we've given ourselves is a bit more of a, a cleaner look to this update function so if we need to add more things into this uh, first burst controller like head bobbing movement or, or anything else they can be um they can be moved in and uh, we've also we could make these member variables public um as well so we could access them outside of this class um should we want to um in some way affect the input um and that's pretty much it um if you uh, look at the code now it is that little bit neater and tidier we've managed to add in some uh, values uh, for the with sliders so if you see under player when this compiles you should have the um, values in this player script when it finally compiles we'll show the sliders for the different um, uh, values that you can put in for the oops I did save it control s uh, yep the only thing is public for each of those mistake otherwise it won't show up in the editor at all pop it back to there recompile and up they should pop so now you can just change them as you need to um hopefully that will help you make a first person controller uh it's pretty much a pretty important part of any game is to have some kind of controller whether it's a first person or car and um yeah good luck and happy coding <laughs>